Hello and welcome dear students, learners and professionals. Welcome to the interesting video on dissolution testing condition selection. In this video mainly we will discuss how the dissolution testing conditions are selected and what is the science and logic behind these condition selections. So conditions are like media, media volume, RPM, apparatus, use of surfactants and many more. So let's see first with the introduction that why dissolution testing is done. So as we know dissolution testing is a in vitro testing to evaluate the in vivo performance and also to evaluate the variables of the formulation that affect the drug release that is the rate and extent of the release of the drug substance from the finished doses form. So that is the main motto to have a understanding of batch to batch variation in the drug release and to evaluate the in vivo performance of the drug product based on the in vitro dissolution so that we can know that the batch or the product will perform well in the in vivo or not then the apparatus uh, there are various apparatus as per usp there are seven apparatus and generally the temperature of the media is kept 37 degree with the variation of 0.5 degree celsius there are basically seven different apparatus for dissolution testing and out of this up to usp4 dissolution apparatus are used for oral solid formulations mainly so basket and paddle type are there which are usp1 and usp2 then reciprocating cylinder that is usp3 flow through cell that is USP 4, then USP 5, 6 and 7. So these 5, 6 and 7 are mainly used for the transdermal patches. Mainly the basket apparatus and paddle apparatus are used widely for formulations which are meant for oral, oral administration. Mainly USP 1 and 2 apparatuses are used. So what will be the RPM? See generally whenever USP1 basket is used, the RPM is kept like 50 RPM or 100 RPM and mainly USP1 basket apparatus is used for oral capsules and tablets. Then USP2 that is pedal apparatus. For pedal apparatus generally the RPM of 50, 60, 75 or 100 can be kept. And that RPM is based on the oral solid formulations like capsules and tablets. If there is a heap formation or cone formation at the bottom of the dissolution bowl, then based on that observation, the, the RPM is increased. Generally, the standard RPM is 50 RPM. Then for apparatus 2 pedal with 25 and 50 RPM is also selected when there is a oral suspension formulation so as suspension formulation uh, there is no requirement of disintegration so lower rpm can suffice the requirement also whenever we are using apparatus 2 pedal the excessive rpm may give foam if the media is containing surfactant so fo foaming of the media is containing surfactant to be avoided that is very very basic requirement then the sampling points what should be sampling points generally for IR formulation sampling is done up to 60 minutes when the product is under development and generally Q point of 15 minute 30 minute 45 minute or sometimes 60 minute is kept based on the product characteristics but in uh, product development 5 10 15 20 30 45 and 60 minute sampling is done to understand the dissolution profile and shape of the dissolution curve so this shape to get this shape proper shape we have to take the uh, samples so time points to be included for adequately reflect the shape of dissolution curve with ascending and plateau phases so ascending means whenever you are having a dissolution increase that means release in the drug rate like here this is the ascending phase up to 30 minutes for this type of uh, example and then it is becoming 
similar that means once the plateau is reached here then dissolution can be dissolution sampling can be stopped then considering the media see in media various uh, parameters are there like media composition media volume api solubility and sink condition in the media media ph additives in the media like surfactants and enzymes then common ion effects if any api stability in the media media deaeration and in total the discriminatory power of the dissolution test so one by one we will start first is media composition so whenever we are uh, selecting a composition so first of all we study or we check in the literature is there any method available like if usp method is there then we can use that method if ogd method is there or in any literature scientific literature that uh, dissolution method is given then that is used otherwise if you don't have any literature or this you have to select the uh, media based on the formulation properties then solubility of the drug substance in that media and the pk of the drug substance so formulation properties solubility and pk of the drug substance are very much important while selecting the media composition and during this uh, uh, dissolution method of parameter selection whatever the guidelines are available all these guidelines should be studied in detail and based on those principles given by the regulatory guidelines we should select the suitable dissolution conditions then is the stability of the drug substance in the media see if there is a degradation of the api in the dissolution media then it will not truly reflect the formulation properties that's why the api should be stable in that media till the dissolution is completed that means running the dissolution for example 60 minute for ir formulation and then uh, studying the release by uv or hplc so till that time that api should be so soluble as well as it should be stable in the media and generally the 0.1 normal scl 0.01 normal scl 0.01 normal scl in the aqueous media are used then ph 4.5 acidic buffer is also used and 6.8 buffer are generally used as a dissolution media and water is also used but generally the water uh, quality varies and there is no buffer capacity for water as a media that's why water to be used as a media should be avoided then buffers can be used as the buffers uh, maintain the ph of the media after addition of the api also see once the dissolution started that means the api comes into the solution and that api may impact the ph of the medium that's why buffers are used so that the ph of the medium remains same after api is dissolved that is same ph in the dissolution run time whatever the ph you obtain for dissolution medium freshly prepared and it should be maintained or it is a it is not a mandatory but if it is maintained till the end of the dissolution then it will give you the true reflection of the formulation then generally hydro alcoholic medium is not used because hydro alcoholic conditions are not available in the physiological ph or in stomach and intestine then specific bioreliant media can be used if in the development the specific bioreliant media is developed that media can be used or that composition or ph media can be used for development as well as routine analysis then coming to the media volume generally 500 ml 600 ml 750 ml 900 ml or 1000 ml are used for usp1 2 and usp1 and 2 and generally uh, 250 ml is used for usp3 apparatus see the volume and ph should be selected such that it should provide you the sink condition generally sink condition is meant, obtained when the three times of the strength of the formulation get dissolved into the media 
that means if you have 500 mg tablet and your media or dissolution media is capable to dissolve 1500 mg of the api so that you can say the sync conditions are obtained or available or the sync condition is meeting then if you are using the media volumes outside the generalized ranges then justification is required then coming to the api solubility and sync condition in the media the api solubility is a prime requirement and if api solubility is not there and sync condition is not there then the true formulation differences cannot be reflected by that dissolution method volume of the fluid needed to fully dissolve three times of the targeted amount of the drug substance in the doses form is the definition of sync condition for example if you have a tablet or capsule with 500 mg strength then 1500 mg should get dissolved in the volume selected so that the media saturation is avoided and formulation differences can be shown by the dissolution testing and this is the main requirement of the dissolution test as dissolution test is the performance test for the formulation volumes may provide sync with lower formulation strength but may not with the higher strengths so this condition may also be there when there is a number of formulation strengths and lower strength dissolution media provides the sync condition but once the strength is increased that times that media volume becomes saturated and there are less chances of availability of the sync condition so that time it is called as strength dependent dissolution then coming to the media ph the ph is ph selection is based on the drug properties at pk see generally the weak acid drugs dissolution rate increases with increase in ph that means weak acidic drugs are get more soluble at basic ph and weak base drugs dissolution rate increases with decrease in ph select the ph in the physiological ph range that means generally from 1 to ph 6.8 to meet the sync condition and if you meet the sync condition by selecting the ph there will be less requirement or no requirement of the surfactant addition if the drug pk is out of the physiological ph range suppose your drug is having a pk of 12 or 13 that time use the media with ph in physiological ph range and use minimum level of surfactant to meet the conditions much more amount of surfactant needs to be avoided and much more justification is required when we are using a more than sufficient quantity of the surfactant as it will lead to the under discriminatory dissolution condition the medium ph should be maintained throughout the dissolution run time then enzymes and surfactants surfactants are the wetting agents and they decrease the surface tension they also act as a wetting agent between the solid particle surface and the solvent and thus these surfactant or wetting agents improve the solubility of the drugs this property of the surfactants is utilized to get the sync condition and the the not appropriate to use some of the surfactants with some of the apis like anionic surfactants such as surf, sodium lauryl sulfate sls it is also called as sds with cationic drug substances so that surfactant should be selected cautiously and its level is required to be optimized then the point is that when we can use the surfactant so when the drug has solubility problems or the api is not soluble in water that time surfactant can be used then when the drug is insoluble across the ph that means insoluble at all the ph range and when the drug can be soluble in non biological media but the requirement is to use biological media so by using the surfactant 
the ph can be taken into the physiological range that time surfactant can be used and also when surfactant is required to maintain the sink condition so all these conditions says that when you can use the surfactant then coming to the enzymes enzymes like pepsin and pancreatin are generally used in the dissolution testing and these are used when there is a cross linking in the gelatin capsules hard gelatin capsules and in gelatin coated tablets so cross linking means there is a cross linking in the gelatin there are the peptide bonds which make the gelatin less soluble or insoluble that's why the dissolution get decreased and after addition of these enzymes those bonds are broken and drug get released so these enzymes are used in the dissolution testing of hard gelatin capsules soft gelatin capsules and sometimes the gelatin coated tablets the surfactant examples i have mentioned here like sls is anionic ctab is cationic polysorbate 20 polysorbate 80 macrogral cetosterol ether these are non ionic then bridge 35 triton x100 and some other examples are there which are non ionic so mainly three types are there anionic cationic and non ionic these are selected based on the drug properties then what is common ion effect in the media see if the same counter ion is as that of the salt of the drug substance is present in the media it may affect the ionization and solubilization of the drug substance like phosphate phosphate or scl scl so that these charged ionizable drug substances the solubilization can be affected based on the presence of common ion so this is required to be avoided common ion effect should not be there as it will hamper the dissolution process then api stability in the media whenever we are studying the api stability in media the impact of buffers impact of ph temperature and surfactants on the solubility and stability of the api should be studied in detail and based on that information the media is selected then coming to the discriminatory power of the selected dissolution test so based on the science based on the um, experience and based on the regulatory guidelines and the based on the development knowledge you have selected the dissolution method for routine analysis or qc release so that method should be discriminatory and what is the meaning of discriminatory see this method should discriminate between the good and bad batches so from the development that should be taken into consideration in media selection one point is also there which is media deaeration generally if the media is containing the dissolved oxygen or air bubbles that may affect the dissolution process and media deaeration can be done by heating filtering and drawing a vacuum for some period so that the air bubbles get avoided see media containing surfactant are not generally deaerated after addition of surfactant because simply see if you deaerate the media after addition of surfactant there will be excessive foaming then the discriminatory power dissolution method should be able to discriminate between the changes to the drug product formulation that is composition then drug manufacturing process drug, drug product manufacturing process so that there is a distinguish between or there is a differentiation between acceptable and unacceptable batches and the discriminatory power of the method is checked by making the formulations with some meaningful changes in the composition and manufacturing process so these bad batches are tested with the uh, dissolution method which is finalized and that dissolution is compared with the good batches 
so if there is a clear cut differentiation then it can be said that the method has suitable discriminatory power and this is mandatory nowadays as per the requirements of regulatory agencies so this is the basic criteria for uh, setting or selection of the dissolution testing conditions for making this video i have referred usp uh, guide usp chapters for dissolution ema and usfda guidances for dissolution test for ir products so i hope you might have got a good understanding out of this video so please do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth press the bell icon and keep watching the videos thank you